Filipino roadrunner Jonas Sultan is set to fight in Japan, giving the East Asian scene some injection. Fans of his unique poise and style will get to relax and see him duke it out against a Japanese newcomer. It's a non-title bout that everyone is expecting Sultan to win. But is his opponent really that outmatched? Let's find out. Zoltan's Travels Born in 1991 in the small town of Tampilison, Jonas Zoltan was born just in time to witness the meteoric rise of Manny Pacquiao into top billing success in the 2000s. Born to a family of eight, his father had to work hard as a corn farmer, and his mother had to work for years as household help in Saudi Arabia. Growing up poor, and as a Filipino, therefore, he had already had the best possible childhood hero. Boxing was going to be his way out of poverty. He jumped headfirst into a professional career in 2013 after training and taking part in amateur bouts here and there. Although he would taste defeat for the first time to Ronaldo Cervania, in that very same year he trucked along and continued to submit opponents with knockouts and unanimous decision wins. He amassed a 9-2 record during the next two years, with the first round knockout against Renate Suakasa cementing his unique Filipino power punching style. However, his fight against Rene Daquel in 2015 would launch him as a rising star within the Philippines, as that fight was for the Philippine Game and Amusements Board Filipino Super Flightweight belt. It was his first belt win and an important milestone for a boxer of his background to score any backing or sponsorship to win a world title. He won the fight by unanimous decision and has succeeded in knocking Daquel down once. What sealed the deal was Daquel being deducted a point in the ninth round for a disorienting headbutt that caused a cut above Sultan's eyelid. Taking the belt from Dakel, Sultan had enough fuel to go international, and go international he did. The quest took him to Japan, where he was matched up with Japanese boxer Go Anaga. Anaga is known for being a highly talented and tactical mind from the Japanese boxing scene, and he was undefeated back then. For Sultan, Onaga's endurance and a mind uniquely attuned for startling opponents and catching the littlest gaps in defense proved to be too much. His first international outing was a defeat but failure is just a part of life for this stoic and calm Filipino. Not long after the defeat, Zoltan faced Tatsui Ikimizu on March 27, 2016 in his second fight in Japan. He won this fight by a second round technical knockout. His Filipino title defense was also scheduled two months later, and he made his first defense against Romel Oliveros on May 28, 2016. He won with the fifth round knockout. To top this eventful year out, he challenged the reigning IBF Intercontinental Super Flyweight title holder Makazole Tete on December 16, 2016. He finished the South African in the second round, beginning right out the bat with a highly aggressive poise and forward attacking pressure. The referee stopped the bout after Tete was left dazed and unable to hit back. Yoni Zoltan's fight game had also developed further by this point, and he was seen employing a mix of strategies so that it became hard for his opponents to read him. Ultimately, not being able to anticipate his moves is what spelt the end for many of them. And this set him in contention with none other than Jerwin Nakahas in 2018, who held the IBF Bantam world title. It was one of the most anticipated boxing matches for Filipinos, with two great Filipino boxers fighting each other for the title. A range of opinions flew, many of which weren't kind to Zotan, and it was a fight to succeed Manny Pacquiao's legacy. Many disapproved of the defending champion Jerwin Nakahas defending from another Filipino but neither had any time for that idle talk. This is by far my toughest defense, since I'm fighting against a Filipino, and we all know how tough Filipinos are, especially in the ring, said Akahas. Filipino boxers put their heart and soul into their fights. They're hungry to fight. The 12 rounds went extra hard, as both Filipino fighters really did put their hearts and souls into it. After all that, Akahas was declared the winner by unanimous decision. The chance of a world championship belt had slipped, but it was still no time to stop. Jonas Zoltan remains hungry for a world championship belt that has eluded him since 2018. His fight with Masuda is to be one part of a long path that still remains. New blood. Unfortunately, Riku Masuda is so early in his career and such a newcomer that the internet is practically dry of information about him. What we can tell you though is that he's 26 years of age and has won three fights with knockouts. His last fight, however, ended in a unanimous decision loss to the much more exciting prospect Saya Susumi. Zoltan will be his first Filipino opponent in his first fight outside of East Asia, as he's fought the Korean boxer Young Ho An in Korea. So this is his chance at making a comeback, following his defeat at the hands of Saya Susumi for the Japan Boxing Commission Bantam weight title in August. With Masuda being a clear underdog, 
It may be tempting to think that this is no contest for Jonas Zoltan, who has had a much longer career and had enough time to figure out what works and what doesn't. Plus, he's fought a top-tier world champion in the form of Derwin Ancajas. However, Masuda's pro record isn't the whole story. It's because he's fought 66 times as an amateur, where he's won 52 of them in Japan. We'd like to tell you all about those amateur experiences, but again, there's no online information about them. Now, he's far from making a breakthrough internationally, but a well-fought amateur experience like his can only translate to a great professional boxing record. Japan remains in the back seat when it comes to boxing, but the Japanese people recently have been enthusiastically taking part in all sorts of combat sports, including kickboxing, MMA, and boxing itself. A Japanese boxing renaissance may really be on the horizon, and Riku Masuda has a good chance to be an integral part of it. Fighters compared. Lacking formal amateur fighting experience, Jonas Zoltan was criticized for fighting like a boxer who learned boxing from a YouTube video. This was despite his natural advantage and great strength. However, the evolution of his fight game over the years transformed him into a greatly unpredictable fighter. It's hard to resolve Tom because of his style, said German Akahas. Sometimes he's a brawler. Sometimes he throws counter punches. I can't really read his style. But now they say he's focusing on speed. Because of his size, he needs to be fast. As we've mentioned before, this keeps opponents on their toes and organically creates openings that Zoltan can strike to score devastating hits. This is exactly how he scored his knockout since 2016, and it's a very daunting thing to be on the receiving end of it. Zoltan also mixes it up with blinding speed and at the right moments, and that has to be a nightmare scenario for a relatively new boxer to be facing. On top of all that, he's never lost his hunger for a world championship title. Boxing was what created a way for him out of poverty, and he's going to do everything he can in order to reach the top. It doesn't matter if I'm famous or not, it's better to become a world champion. I don't want to become a star or be famous. I just have a dream to become a world champion, and that's my goal, said Zoltan. With he and his older brother being put into boxing by their father during childhood, the love of boxing alone is the greatest gift for him, and he has no issue doing it while being underestimated. Jonas likes to be the underdog, said trainer Edito Villamore. He wants to prove something. On the other hand, Rico Masuda has automatic advantages in being younger and, most importantly, having a successful amateur boxing record. In his amateur boxing fights, Masuda displays stellar defense and footwork, often leading to working up slowly to accurate shots. Not having developed much in the way of flexibility yet, this seems to be his primary battle plan. Masuda also has a reach of 177 centimeters, which is noticeably longer than Zoltan's. Attempting to keep him at bay and exploit Zoltan's weaknesses when he adopts an aggressive approach might be the only way to victory. This will be Riku Masuda's toughest fight ever in life so far. But if he wins, he can bring Japanese boxing one step further forward. Are you excited to see Yone Zoltan get closer to a world title belt? Or are you excited to see Riku Masuda enter boxing stardom? Leave us a like and subscribe if you agree with our assessment of this showdown. We'll see you again when the dust settles on the canvas.